computer scientist and artificial intelligence artist. These are two terms that describe Ahmed El Gamel. Thank you, Ahmed, for being here with us in another talk with For Art Technologies. Thank you. Welcome, and because you were recently part of our digital exhibition, the Digital Baroque History Meets Algorithm, it is a pleasure for us to have you here so we can introduce you and let's go right into it. So can you please introduce yourself? Yes, um, my name is Ahmed Gamal, and um, I um, have multiple hats. Um, I'm a professor at uh, Rutgers University, academic, basically uh, doing computer science for a long time, in particular doing AI. And uh, I'm also uh, an artist. In the last few years, I've been practicing uh, making art using AI, exploring how can I use AI in making art and I make it uh, possible for other artists to make um, art using AI. So I'm totally in the middle of, of academia, art, and, and uh, entrepreneurship and uh, everything. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it's always very interesting to see these interdisciplinary backgrounds. And yeah, for me, it's always a, a pleasure to talk to all the different artists because, yeah, all the different inspirations that come into play, it's always fascinating. And speaking about that, where do you get inspiration from? I, I get inspiration actually from artists, from talking to artists and uh, um, uh, interacting with artists and uh, reflecting on, on uh, uh the conversation i have with them that's really my biggest inspiration uh it's always uh fascinating to see how they use technology how they want to use the technology what they want to do and that by, by itself give me new ideas of, of of looking at things and new ideas of of um uh, expressing myself so it's it's uh, totally um interaction with artists is a is a main source of inspiration great thank you and i think it's very important especially with the type of work you do bringing this uh, artificial intelligence into play is very important to definitely be in touch with artists all the time, I suppose. Thank you very much. Well, tell us more about your exhibition. So what's your experience exhibitions? Uh, where have you exhibited before? And yeah, there's a bit of history that you want to share with us too. Sure. Uh, so back in 2017, we um, built um, uh, an AI artist that we named uh, AI Can or I Can, where uh, we uh, trained AI to look at uh, Western art history since Renaissance till now and um, um, modified the way AI make art to make it uh, creative. We call it creative adversarial networks uh, and that's from where come the name AI can. Um, basically, uh, we push the AI to look at the art and digest it and give us some new ideas, new uh, styles, things that doesn't fit what happened before. So if, if the AI uh, give us another impressionist or another cubism or another surrealist art uh, that's typical, we reject that. The AI learn how to uh, innovate and, and become creative. And that makes a big uh, buzz and interest uh, uh, and raise questions about will AI now becoming an autonomous artist and, and, and uh, will it step into this creative domain and, and will it take the jobs of artists and things like that. And my response to that was basically, no, I mean, this is just show that AI can become creative, but at the end, um, it's, it's the artist who's in control to use this technology in making art. And, and um, I have been making several exhibitions uh, since then, try to focus on that vision. So we exhibited in LA, we exhibited in Frankfurt, we exhibited in, in many places. Uh, we uh, had our... Uh, exhibition in New York City um, back in 2019. Um, it was uh, the first gallery exhibition that shows 100% um, uh, uh, art made by AI um, uh, for a solo artist. Um, and we exhibited also in 2019 in the National Museum of China in Beijing, uh, the biggest museum in Beijing um, as part of an exhibition about art and technology. We exhibited in, in many places in Frankfurt, in Art Plus, uh, where this is the, in, in the Frankfurt uh, Book Fair. Um, we have a venue called Art Plus in many places. So it was really a good opportunity to showcase how art is made by AI, um, what is the role of uh, human arts in that. And from there, um, I really focused on how to collaborate with artists and, and make, make uh, more, uh, the technology more accessible for artists. I mean, El Gamel, um, it's kind of natural being in this environment of artificial intelligence, I suppose, to go into NFT. But how did that happen? How did you then arrive into this era of creating art and selling it, trading it? 
Um, yeah. NFT is a very interesting concept. Uh, I have been following NFT uh, in the last uh, three years uh, or more. Um, I have seen some artists starting using NFTs um, four or five years ago when it's very in very early stages. And um, there was not much hype at that time about NFTs, everything, everybody is still exploring. Um, and I've been following some of the artists who have been, uh, I've seen them take, going the journey from being broke to being millionaires uh, in 2020, in 2021. Um, and I'm very happy for them to see this journey and seeing that finally they can can make money for themselves. They can make career out of their work um, and, and um, they, they deserve that. Um, uh, so um, I myself experimented with, with uh, NFT in the last uh, year or so also. Um, uh, and uh, it, it's, it's a really interesting journey. It's really interesting to see uh, what can be done and uh, what can we do about it? What, what can we, um, uh, what kind of audience is there? How is different from uh, coming from, from a place where I already exhibited and, and sold art in, in traditional galleries? To see uh, what's difference in there, what is that? What's what kind of collectors are there? What are the taste uh, in there? And definitely, it's quite different from from what we experience in the art world. And and um, um, being also um, um, uh, involved a lot with other artists uh, who are coming to that domain, that give me a lot of perspective about um, what. Um, what they want to do in that space? Um, how can can I can I help them in that space? Um, not only myself, but can I, how can I help them in understanding uh, the NFT space? How to uh, mint? How to uh, find collectors? How to find uh, their space? That's more important for me than than actually selling my own art. Mm -hmm. And this is very interesting because now that you say it, it's it's going to keep changing, I think. But uh, what we try here in for art is to make it as simple as possible. You know, even artists who never have used a wallet or are not interested in this crypto world could mint and create an NFT. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm heading a bit ahead of, of the next question. But exactly, I, I guess you can see the difference with the different platforms and the different places where you can also do do the work. Right. Do, did you find big differences when working with the for art app? For, in, for instance? Definitely. I think the, the, the for art is really amazing uh, in, in the way they connect physical artworks to uh, uh, NFTs. These have been totally missing in all other marketplaces I have seen, uh, all other, other, other art, art marketplaces. Uh, um, um, it's also all about um, the digital file, uh, minting the digital files and, and, and uh, selling it. And we have seen a lot of uh, problems with that. Um, anybody can make a copycat of, of that digital file and, and mint it uh, uh, and make another version of it. Um, and uh, there are a lot of um, fakes now in the NFT, which is very hilarious because the whole point of NFT was basically to, to avoid this uh, problem of, of fakes in, in, in the art market, but actually it's end up to be have more fakes in the NFT space because of that, because of uh, it's totally digital and, and you can make copycats. Um, so uh, the fact that you can have a physical work uh, and um, have a digital signature out of it and connect it to the NFT, uh, which is today digital, and have that as part of the NFT, uh, uh, that's really important. Uh, this allow really a new, uh, a new kind of collectors to come in, in the space uh, who appreciate having art in, in their walls like myself. And, and at the same time, they have the, the, the records, the provenance digitally uh, uh, authenticated through the blockchain and an NFT, but still, um, enjoy the physical art and enjoy the digital art, which is really uh, important. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, just is what you say that basically find the middle point for the type of collector as well, or the taste in the different, different spaces. Okay, and what's happening for you? Are you planning more NFTs in your recent or, or following months? Definitely, definitely. I have several things coming up, uh, several other things coming up. Um, um, I, 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 yeah, definitely. I. I um, um, I would like to talk about the work that I, I exhibited in, in, in the For Art exhibition. I think that's uh, the, the most important thing uh, I would like to talk about here. Um, um, so uh, the work is called uh, Saskia. Um, uh, uh, it's a, um, a part of uh, a series of six pieces uh, about uh, Saskia. Saskia was um, the wife of uh, Rembrandt, uh, the, the famous uh, Dutch uh, Baroque artist. Um, and uh, basically, um, I, I, I'm, I'm really fascinated by that, by, by that um, uh, uh, character, um, uh, Saskia. So uh, uh, um, Saskia, uh, um, uh, Rembrandt make many, many portraits of Saskia over, over her life. 
and uh, they are amazing. They are beautiful. Uh, they show her journey um, from the time they, they married, get married, and until she died very shortly, like in, in ten years. And and um, he depicted Saskia even after he, after after he, she she died, and the way he depicted it changed over time. And 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 after she died, she, she he depicted her. Uh, in a very luxurious way, in a very uh, immortal way. And I like that, and I like to uh, uh, extrapolate on that and uh, reflect on um, um, women's suffering, um, because uh, the tragedy in her life is really uh, uh, touching. So just to give you a, a brief idea, um, Saskia um, married uh, uh, Rembrandt uh, for about uh, 10 years, and, and during that 10 years, uh, she, she uh, had three babies died in, in birth. And uh, the only um, time when she had a baby that survived, she herself died at birth, at giving birth. Uh, uh, so it's really a tragedy uh, where you find um, how women were suffering that age, um, um, just giving birth to to uh, to to, uh, to to babies, and and uh, most of the time they they, they died in, in in that process. And she was not a poor person. She's really. Um, uh, well, uh, um, uh, kind of rich uh, in that society. So imagine the poor, poor women in, in, in the society, what, what kind of life they live. Mm. It's very foreign for us now, but it's this sign of suffering is really uh, important. So I, I use AI in this series to um, give new life to these portraits um, uh, and trying to uh, uh, use the symbols of, um, of jewelry and pearls and sapphire and make this uh, um, portrait morphed into new ways as if they are a physical object um, uh, totally uh, redone with, with this uh, AI generated uh, uh, um, jewelry, uh, pearls and sapphires and other stones to give this uh, um, uh, um, immortal um, uh, feeling uh, um, um, and um, the divine feeling of uh, coming from the pearl and sapphire in the work. So I'm trying to explore basically using AI in, in uh, remaking uh, some of the artworks um, from the past, give it, give it new life and new uh, ways of, of uh, thinking about it and giving uh, it uh, immortality uh, in, in, in this uh, age. And yeah, I mean, with this, I like to connect it with the collaboration with us. Would you like to say a few words? How was working with for art technologies? Yeah, it was amazing working with your team. Um, um, I haven't seen seen anything like that before with any other marketplaces. Um, um, uh, the onboarding process was amazing. Uh, the team really spent the time and effort to uh, onboard me and other artists in the platform, showing us how it works, uh, which is very different from other platforms. Uh, the support from the marketing, te marketing team was also amazing uh, before the exhibition and after. Um, 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 uh, there's a lot of publicity that happened with uh, with that event. Uh, so the good job in marketing uh, the, the the event. Um, and even after the pieces were sold, um, that the relation still continued. And and uh, I, I met with the team. Uh, I met with the team a couple of times, planning ahead and and uh, reflecting on what happened, which is really a, a very interesting uh, concept. That, that's this is the kind of things I used to see in, in traditional art markets with working with galleries, which I missed when I started working with NFTs, which I didn't like at all. Like other, other NFT marketplaces uh, really focus on closing the gates for an artist and make them wait in long wait, wait, wait lists until they can join. And, and they mainly focus on, on um, who's selling and who has social uh, following. They don't care much about, <laughs> about what kind of art they're making. Um, well, this is not the case here in Fort Art. I think the, the, the selection of artists they had um, is really a good reflection of artists who care about uh, their career and, and their art and, and the technology and, and the message you are saying. Uh, it's not just about um, uh, social following and, and, and not about just about uh, how much have sold in the past. It's so more about art itself. Thank you. Yes, and that's what we always say. You know, we love art. We live art, and I think you can see that with everyone uh, being involved in these processes. It was was beautiful, and exactly. Thank you so much for being part of it. Well, to close this interview, thank you so much, Ahmed Elgamel, for being with us. Uh, what would you like to say? As you know, in our following in the app, we have collectors, gallerists, people who love art. So, what would you say to them? Uh, welcome to this new. Um world uh, or that bridge between physical uh, art market and the future um, uh, uh, digital art market. Uh, we are all exploring this together. We are all building this together. 
and you are essential part of this journey, uh, being one of the very few first collectors, NFT collectors, you are making history. Thank you so much, Ahmed Ergamel, for being with me today for another talk here in For Art Technologies. We wish you all the success that you deserve. Let's see what happens with this development, with these new tools that you are exploring, with your collaborators in the <laughs> artificial intelligence. And exactly, from all of us here, we wish you a lot of success. Thank you.